G'day ladies and gents, and welcome back to War Thunder. Today, we're gonna to talk about the worst premium in the game, period, and that is the MB5. Now, you might be thinking, well, you know, what did the poor MB5 ever do to you? Uh, well, in fact, it did do something, and that was hurt my personal little feely feels. The MB5 is one of the planes that I purchased with my own money, despite being a content creator. I actually got the uh, pre-order bonus for it, and I was sorely disappointed. If this is a lesson to not pre-order things in War Thunder, this is probably your best example. The MB5 was touted as perhaps a compatriot to the P51H. Uh, it has a Rolls-Royce Griffin engine, which is akin to those of the latter Spitfires, um, and also has the, you know, similar design to the P51. The MB5 is roughly based off the P51, is considered to be an experimental version of, uh, uh, or some sort of improvement on the P-51s. Now, this works all good and well, but it's such a delicate plane. The MB-5 is a very finicky aircraft to fly. It takes a lot of patience. And to be honest, with the combination of Hispanos and enemy teams, you don't really get a chance to let this thing properly shine. Now, we're gonna do a fair bit of uh, chopping forward in this video. Props do get a little bit dead with a couple of, uh, you know, little dead spots. So we're gonna be skipping ahead every now and then just to keep the gameplay nice and fresh for you guys. The MB-5 is a plane that has a fairly mediocre climb rate, and that might, might be, uh, you know, a minor defect with the plane. It might be sort of a minor downside, but honestly, at this battle rating 5.0, you're going to be facing things like the BF-109K4 and the A7M, which have insane climb rates, and this is going to put you at a severe disadvantage. You'll have other planes as well, I-225 in the background there, uh, even the LA-9, the Yak-3U, all of these planes can outclimb you and this puts you at a major disadvantage. In prop battles, your altitude is essentially the only thing that saves you from getting absolutely annihilated. And things like the A7M right here have made a big boo-boo. So he has gone really, really slow and that's put him in a very hairy situation. This Focke Wolf 190 is coming in really quickly, but is uh, not really going to be able to get some guns on me. Maybe one or two. It's an A8, of course, being the premium, but I'm very easily able to avoid it. The A7M1 is luckily not going for me and is being dived on by the uh, I-225. And the 190A has plenty of teammates around him to sort of get rid of the threat there. So I'm going to quickly try and dispatch the A7M because I'm pretty confident that he is the biggest threat. My Hispanos just aren't quite landing home. I'm, I'm getting some kind of disappointing times where the Hispanos sometimes do nothing and then they just do everything, which is really strange. But you know what? I'll take what I can get. The Focke Wolf 190A is dead and this leaves me in a good situation. The MB-5 is very similar to the P-51 in its performance. And for those of you that know my prop content from a little while ago, uh, you know, I haven't uploaded some props in a while. Let's get back into that, shall we? We know that the P-51 is one of my personal favorites. I really love the boom and zoom playstyle. I like the energy fighting, and I like the uh, slow, methodical gameplay. But unfortunately, the MB-5 just sort of lacks a little bit. It's not quite as potent as the other planes that you would hope for. The MB-5 really reminds me of uh, the disappointment that your father might feel when he sees you playing video games instead of going out there and, uh, you know, getting some girls or something like that. The MB-5 genuinely disappoints me. And I know a lot of people do enjoy the MB-5, but hear me out. This particular plane is just too difficult to master. It's not worth the effort, and it is simply not worth the time. The A6M5 here is set on fire, lucky head on. I'm lucky that the Hispanos converged and hit at that distance. You can see just because of the short stubby wings, the MB5 doesn't really gather a lot of lift. And so you aren't really going to be winning any turn fights. It's a bit, bit stubby, uh, a little bit of a chode wing, let's say. And the MB5 does disappoint in that respect as well. So you are gonna be bleeding speed in turns quite a bit. But you know, when you have teammates around, you do tend to be able to pop off. And of course, if the Hispanos manage to converge, you have a great time playing this plane. But I honestly think these situations are a little few and far between. The MB5 does have those four Hispanos, which does put it at a significant advantage when it comes to firepower, provided that the Hispanos work well. And we're gonna see this here in this clip here with the A26B10. It's a pretty chunky bomber. It is fairly durable. And of course, we are able to you know, put this plane in a dive, pick up a decent amount of speed, and it is, it's fast. 
the MB5, I will not deny that the MB5 is an absolute speed demon, but you have to get it to altitude before you can abuse the speed. And the simple fact of the matter is that the MB5 does not have that speed or that climb rate to be able to utilize this insane amount of speed. It just needs to get up to altitude in the first place. And once you do get up to altitude, once you do have the energy advantage, this plane is actually good. But because of the battle rating that you're situated in, it is a very tough ask to do well in this plane. There we go, Yak3U in the next game here, and the F4U looking very, very juicy. We're at 4,300 meters, and 4,300 meters is okay for a Griffin engine, but you ideally want to be a little bit higher, like 5,000, 6,000 meters, um, in order to get the Griffin and the turbo, I believe it's got a supercharger or a turbocharger, I'm not quite sure, uh, but it's got one of the two. Um, you've got to get it to higher altitudes to make this thing really shine, and that's the problem with planes like this. Now, I'm focusing here on the F4U, and I've just noticed that the Yak-3 is sitting behind me. Now, the Yak is a bit of a problem but I do have the ability to turn and burn. Once I do turn and burn, however, I am lacking a lot of that ability to keep up. So if the Yak-3U engages in an energy fight, I'm screwed. So what does the Yak-3U do? The Yak-3U decides to go down. And this is good for me because it means that I can pick up speed, which I can then bleed into the turns. And this gives me a slight advantage in a dogfight. Now the F4U is more than dead, and this allows me to focus my attention on the Yak-3U. He's tried to get away, and you can see the amount of speed that I have bled in these turns. He's actually able to sort of pursue other, other endeavors here. The Yak-3U is pretty much only held to account by the Narval, who has, you know, sort of been on the other side of the fight for the rest of this match. And only because of the Yak-3U am I able to get anywhere near this guy. It's, uh, you know, it's kind of sad. You are not able to dictate the fight as you can with other aircraft. This this is my, my main gripe with the MB-5. And this is my main gripe with a lot of aircraft that other people tend to find otherwise somewhat pleasant to fly. You don't have that ability to just simply dictate the fight. Now, the Yak-3U seems to have blacked out there, and that gives me a little bit of an advantage to step in and get the kill. But, you know, these are very small mistakes that I have to capitalize on immediately with extremely high stakes. And the MB-5, being a premium, you'll want to grind with it. you want to get plenty of kills. you want to rack up maybe some ground targets. Maybe you even want to take it into ground RB. But, no, you just simply can't do that because the MB-5 doesn't have the flexibility to do things like that. And it's just the fact of the matter. It's just the way the plane is. Now, in this case here, going for a couple of head-ons, these two planes are very slow. Uh, but you know what? These are these are fairly easy pickings. And, you know, these are planes that, or kills rather, that any other pilot with any set of skills, like large or small, could potentially get. I honestly don't know what the problem is with the MB-5. I just think that maybe if it had bigger wings, it would be a bit better. Perhaps if it didn't have the contra-rotating props, it wouldn't have the extra weight to, to pull in the in the propeller and in the, in the spinner. Maybe it would be a little bit sort of lighter in that respect. Maybe it would be a bit more punchy. I genuinely don't know what was wrong with the MB-5 design and why it doesn't fit well into War Thunder, apart from not having that really good climb rate and the Hispanos being a little bit janky. Now, B-17 straight ahead on with a B-17G, and we get the chin turret uh, treatment right here. Another B-17G. I'm going to try and stay out of the chin turret, but it's all right. I pilot snipe him anyway, and it looks like this B-17 is going to go down. This is sort of after a good five or ten minutes of just climbing and chilling, and the MB-5, you know, if it was any other plane like the BF-109 K-4, I probably could have made short work of these planes with a lot less climbing and a lot less mucking around. And the fact of the matter is this match I put up here on the channel just to sort of demonstrate how the good matches that you play are not really that amazing. They're not really that fun. This is a five kill game and I shouldn't really complain about a five kill game. But on the other hand, any other plane could have gotten that five kill game. There is not one situation there that could have been done better by things like a P-47, which we are coming up against here. This is the P-47M, and the P-47M has a little trick up its sleeve that the others don't, and that is air brakes. You have the ability to sort of rapidly, rapidly slow down in a plane like the P-47M, and of course, you have those ba big, massive wings, so you can do whatever the hell you want as long as you, you know, work your flaps and work your energy properly, and this P-47 has royally screwed that up. 
And this gives me the slim chance to get in and capitalize on this guy's mistakes. He's clearly made a large mistake. He has blown his energy. So he's now got an altitude disadvantage over me. And I'm able to further my advantage by continuing to pick up speed in no 180 degree turns. Now, he's going to go for a sort of head on thingy here. I'm going to go for a quick one, get a critical hit. And this is pretty much where it's all over the, there for the P47. I'm going to go into the vertical and I'm fairly confident that the P47M will not be able to follow me into the vertical. And of course, that does allow me as well to then dive down upon the P47M. But it looks like he is now well and truly out of fighting range. If he wants to come back, then sure, he can be my guest. But I think the other fish to fry, as in the other planes at higher altitudes uh, that are, you know, not damaged, will be a bigger threat and, of course, will be a bigger payoff for the team. The A7M1 there uh, that has a username that looks like someone's social security number has gone and taken out the F2G1. And we have three Japanese planes at low altitude fighting a Yak-3, which is not a good sign. The Yak-3 will lose its energy very quickly. And of course, the A6M5s will make short work like Velociraptors. So the P47 here is looking super juicy, but I'm not going to go for him. Uh, and of course, we lose another plane to the wretched A6M50. Uh, now, again, looking super juicy. I'm not really sure who to go for. And it looks like the P47 has decided to turn back in. And this is when I decide to strike. If he was going to go back to base, then I probably wouldn't have bothered. But in this case, it looks like he's coming back for more. And I'm very confident now that he is at a severe energy disadvantage. Quick head on here, go for a quick hit, and then straight into the vertical. Because again, I know the P47M will not be able to follow. We're going to go over. And then while we're losing a lot of speed, we're still able to make up that speed from the altitude that we've gained and put the plane into a dive. And, you know, I thought to myself, maybe this is where I just say, screw it and go for the P47 put him down once and for all, and just have no more to do with him. And this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to come in, I'm pushing 770 kilometers an hour, closing in on 800 kilometers per hour, and the P47M is pretty much bang out of energy. He's got nothing left in the tank, and it doesn't matter how fast you are, because he's pretty much given up. And of course, once I've done that, I haven't done any other costly maneuvers until now, which is, you know, admittedly a little stupid. I probably should have done it a little bit easier, but I've noticed that the sheer distance that the zeros are from me gives me enough time to put the plane into a sort of gentle climb. And of course, there are no allies that uh, really require some help that would otherwise have made it if I had been a little bit more, you know, uh, a little bit more aware or a little bit more fruitful. But here's where barcode or social security number guy comes out of nowhere. And this is a really big mistake on my part. I didn't I, I clearly didn't save up enough energy, and now I have to sort of end up in a low altitude dogfight against a plane that is clearly superior at this role. So I'm going to come in, go for the quick head on, and this is where I need to make my mark. I put a fair few rounds downrange, and then I go for the re engage really quick, pull out of the way, and just in the nick of time, super risky maneuver, but it has in this case paid off. Again, these are things that, you know, I don't really have to do in many other planes, but the A6, the A7 is really, really strong, and the MB5 just doesn't have the ability to stick it in a dogfight, and it doesn't really have the ability to run away and gain all of this energy very, very rapidly. So I'm going to try and do this very energy costly maneuver, which honestly could have been the downfall of me right here and right then. The A7 is climbing very quickly, and I've just had to put the flaps out. He is barely missing me with those 20 millimeter cannons. And just as I roll over there, I'm trying to just keep a little bit of altitude, wait for him to stall out. And this is where I strike. I've got my flaps raised, but I've got my throttle off, which allows me to get on the inside of him. And I just, just have able to get on the inside. Very, very close. And honestly, I probably shouldn't have come out of that alive. I made a couple of risky maneuvers, but thankfully they paid off for me. And in this case, I think I'll take it. Now, the enemies here that are in front of me are, you know, another concerning factor. We have uh, another social security number guy, but more importantly, we have this A6M5 who is also looking very scary. He's up at high altitude, he's above us, uh, but he's put himself into a turn to try and get back on the six of this P47 while not seeing me in the MB5. I suppose he's assessed the threat and realizes that the MB5 is not really that much of a threat until, of course, he gets absolutely obliterated, which is an excellent bait there on the P47's part. 
Our next enemy is probably going to be the Ju-288, and the 288 is going for the enemy airfield, or for, the, for the Allied airfield, uh, and so this gives me an opportunity to talk about bomber hunting again. The MB-5 is not a good bomber hunter, simply because it has such a fragile engine, the Hispanos are unreliable, and the climb rate is poor. The MB-5 is a sort of okay plane for fighters, but you really don't want to be using it in that bomber hunting role. The Hispanos are just too tinny, they're just not punchy enough. Uh, if you had something like uh, an MG-151, or hell, even the American 20 mils or the American 50 cals, I would say, yeah, go for it. Bomber hunt all, all you like. Uh, but of course, JU-288s will tend to get to the battlefield pretty quickly. The uh, ME-177s, the America bomber, and the ME-264 will also both outmaneuver you in these air areas. They'll they'll just simply be able to outclimb you. Um, but un in, unfortunately for this JU-288, he's kind of at the short end of the stick, and I've managed to get myself a nice little kill here. Now we're going to fast forward a little bit. I have not rearmed and repaired, but I've decided to go in for another kill here, an oblivious TU-2S. This is a pretty nothing burger kill. Any other plane could have potentially gotten this kill. But you know what? I'm going to leave it in here just because it shows you the ability of the 20 mils when they match or when they when they converge rather. Now, our last enemy here on the map that is the most important is this remaining enemy zero. We have one more zero and it looks like he's going to be at low altitude. The tickets are very rapidly decreasing and we have a JU-288 who's going after the ground targets, which is good for our tickets. But this is where the disappointment sort of brings itself. I personally have never had a good experience in the MB5, and this comes from many, many matches over many, many years of playing the MB5. I don't understand why I end up with such bad luck, but I just have to put it down to the plane. I genuinely think that in any other plane, I probably could have done a little bit better. And I think maybe, you know, maybe it's me. Maybe it's the pilot. Maybe I'm just shit at the game. And, you know, this is a real possibility because occasionally I will meet a plane that I just cannot master no matter how hard I try. But the more I look at this plane, the more I see its traits. I think at 5.0, I would rather be flying the G55S. I would rather be flying the F82. I would rather be flying the, P50, uh, the, the P51s or some sort of Fock Wolf 190 or some sort of BF 109 anything other than this pile of garbage because this pile of garbage only has one thing going for it and that is this extremely good energy retention in this case here this a6m5 is probably going to go for the ground targets and this is where i'm going to start to lose my uh my advantage here he's just going to go for that heavy tank and that puts him in the slightest ticket advantage i'm not kidding you the slightest ticket advantage and gives him the victory how much of a kick in the nuts is that? As a, as a pilot, as someone who, you know, really likes to win by playing fighters, he's managed to do the little cop out and uh, gone for the heavy tank. But you know what? That's to his credit. He's done a good job. He's played the plane and the match properly. And of course, that has left me again with the salty, sour taste in my mouth of the MB5. Now, we're going to get to this last match because I think this is the perfect example of where the MB5 shines, but also demonstrates the MB5 in the exact way that I expect. I'm no longer running the stealth belts, so I'm going to run the air target belts here, and they do have a certain volume of tracer shells, but that's okay, I can deal with that, and I had some games where I wasn't really managing to make my shots. So we're going to go for the A4. The A4 is a pretty low-end Focke Wolf 190. It's not really a massive threat. It doesn't have a really powerful engine. And, of course, we are in a decent down tier because of this plane. Now, there is a 109F, and it looks like he's having some engine troubles or some wing troubles or something like that. So I'm just going to put him down right there and then get him out of the match as soon as possible. We're going to go back up into the vertical, and we're going to be looking for another target. Now, this is an evening match, so the spotting system is pretty piss poor. But because I've gone up, I have an advantage and I'm able to spot people from uh, sort of below me. I also have that ability of, uh, uh, you know, a little bit of immunity, a little bit of impunity. But the MB5 is really not as able to latch onto things like that as I thought or as I would hope. Now, this Doe 335 is performing a very energy costly stall maneuver, trying to go and latch onto me. But he stalls out just at the perfect time. I manage the rope dope He is, in fact, the dope. And boom, there he goes, nice and easy. But of course, the AAA strikes my uh, engine and my, my cabin. So this gives me a, a little bit of a sort of time risk. I'm not, I haven't got much time left. I'm gonna go for a quick head on there with the 109F. 
I smoke his engine and I go straight up into the vertical in order to try and capitalize on his desire to potentially move upwards. And it doesn't really work. Um, I don't really get that luxury, uh, but it looks like I might still be able to catch this 109F anyway. I've got a couple of AI behind me. They're distracting me. They're, uh, you know, taking my ire away from the battlefield. And the 109F is actually gaining away from me, but I'm going to put out a couple of shots anyway. And this is where the Hispanos are actually not too bad. They have a range of about 1.2 kilometers. And now that the 109 has maneuvered and he's starting to feel the effects of that damaged engine, uh, I am able to gain some ground on him. And I've got to put some shells down range, get a pilot snipe. And that was a very, very nice kill. I'm very thrilled with that kill. And the ME264 has crashed, leaving this guy and one more guy as the last remaining enemies on the team. So I could potentially carry this match. I go for the shot, I get the 109D in a little, you know, not really a great shot, but it, it works enough. The 109D13, or 190D13, goes in for a sort of half ass vertical, which is exactly what is going to cost him the uh, maneuver. He's doing some weird rudder maneuvers here, he's trying to avoid me, he's going to go for the bomber, and that puts him in a straight line long enough for me to get my shells down range and go for the kill. He does take out the B25, and the B25 almost takes out me in the process. Now, this puts me in a very dire situation. My engine is failing, I have to get back to base. And we have one more enemy left on the team. This could be a six kill carry. This is really, really exciting. I'm finally able to get a genuinely good match where I have genuinely done a good job and I could potentially carry. Yeah. Tell me about it. If this doesn't sum up the MB5 in a single match, this is my experience. It doesn't matter how hard you try, Someone is still going to bend you over and no Vaseline you. Don't touch the MB5. If this is my experience as an experienced pilot, you're going to have a really shit time. And I can promise you that because I've played so many damn games in this plane and I fucking hate it. Anyway, ladies and gents, that'll do it for today. If you also hate the MB5, please comment below. Nigel is... Uh, I don't know, Nigel is great, something like that. And uh, I'll know that you are the uh, people that have watched to the end of the video. And for those of you that would like to support the channel in a way that is a little bit more personal, you can always donate to my Patreon or have a look at the links in the description below. There's some merch, there's plenty of good stuff. But until then, thank you so much for watching. I appreciate your time. Take care and I'll catch you next time.